the pyramid of the feather serpent. I'm not dreaming. I'm here with Kukul Khan, the big pyramid of Kukul Khan. And go put it in that. And here is a map of Chichen Itza. We have been in El Castillo, this one over here, which is also shown here. Uh, we need to go to the El Cenote. We're gonna walk from here to there. And we're gonna need to go El Rosario, El Osario. The Caracol Observatory, we need to go see this one too. Oh, and the Cenote, should look. Okay. Now, where we go? Look at that little serpent head over there. It has some inscriptions on it, but it's going to be hard to learn to read that. It's not going to be possible. Here we go. Learn inside. This is a big plaza. There's one. Some of these pillars still have the inscriptions on them. And it's called Los Templos del Gran Juego de Pelota. So, the Gran Juego de Pelota was here. Wow. Okay. So this was amazing because it was a more professional, <laughs> I would say. Only the professionals came to play the toka tuk game here. Look at, the, look at the, the proportion of the field. It's completely different to all the ones that we have been seeing. Look at this. And definitely over there, the big king was used to sit. But look at this. It's incredible how they did this. You see the rims over there? And it goes the same for both sides. Big, tall rings for making a goal. And now we're gonna read a little bit here because that's the only way we can get information. The sidewalks in the slope are adorned with six scenes in relief of sacrifices of ball players. Whoa. At the center, there is a ball with a human skull inside at the, at the side. Two groups or individuals representing the teams the head of one of the two teams holds a flint stone knife, and in the other hand, he holds the head of the beheaded player. So, the loser here were beheaded. And it's a big story right on the size, but hopefully it'll be possible to read a little bit, maybe not <laughs> to read, right? Is that right? I don't know how to read it, but here they are. don't represent much, and the blocks have been already stalled. Well, some of the blocks have been stolen, and this is where they said that there was a representation of the beheaded player, the loser. Can you imagine the splendor of this when they came to play and all of these people were cheering about the game? Look at the snake all the way over there to the other side. Oh, see what, what it says over there. The way that we start doing this now, we did the left, now this is the right hand side. You can still see some clear faces there. And the two of them were representing uh, frescoes, sculptures of the people that were killed here during the games. Definitely here was where the, the big bosses used to sit and enjoy what's happening here. They came to watch the game. They sat in the trauma up there. And the players play here. Same thing used to be on the other side. So, okay. The wall is impressive though. Yeah, boy, yeah, boy.
This is structural leans against the great ball game and directly faces the temple of the warriors. There you go. That's the seat of the throne of the great Jawar. Look at the wall. The whole wall, the whole entire wall is decorated. Unfortunately, they put that shed there and you can see it. That's, but that's it for us. I didn't see this, but this is full of skulks. 300 and some skulks is not enough. Skulks is not enough to, to tell them a story, so they have to fill it up with it. Something about dying people here. Look at this. There's a story being told here with all of these representations. And still a lot of conks all over the wall. It must represent something. So we're going to go read what it says. Look at this. The whole decoration. The guys, impressive. The plot of form of the skull called Mulsek. The Mulsek corresponds to the Zompatli for the Nahual culture. Its purpose was to exhibit the gout human remains of sacrifice and enemies and prisoners by the rulers of Chichen Itza. Yeah, as I said, 300 skulls is not enough to represent death. And that's what they did. They represented through all the enemies that they cut, the ball player that died. And here you go. Eagles, eagles. Because this is the platform of the eagles and the jaguars. The serpent on the bottom is representative of the three symbols. The eagle, the jaguar, and the serpent. And the skulks. As I said, the skulks represent death. And that's what is being shown here. Can so you imagine how many people were killed here for them to have enough skulks to go around the whole building and make one of them in each side? Yeah, we come all the way to the end. Okay, so this is called Chichen Itza style. The Chichen Itza style was developed from 900 to 1150 AD. Since it was the latest, it is framed in the metropolis boom. Besides, it is related to Itza's rule in the city. In this style, Maya elements were blended with elements from the rest of the Mesoamerica, particularly from the central plateau. Among the features of this architectonic style are tired structures with columned rooms that form roofed galleries, decoration of feathered serpents, jaguars, motifs related to war, related to war and sacrifice, as well as sculptures integrated to the architectonic space. In the pre-Hispanic city, Tula, some of the elements are recognized such as the chacmol, the feathered serpent, the Atlantean and the Columns Room, okay? Here we are in another different uh, scenario. Look at this. It's a big, more, but this time a square. Pillars, which are also full of inscriptions that are already kind of run, rotten. They don't really see well, but yeah, you may see, you may see. There was all a story being told here, but it is crowded now. It is not really able to see it. Let's keep walking. Let's keep walking. Look at the, the look at that. He felt can be put back. It's on the ground. The serpent head. Look at the look at the rims before they were set up there. Yeah, well, some of them are. are, are completely destroyed. So, and look at all, all the one part over there, on top of the, of the niche, I might say, is, is 
It's carving too. It's telling a story right there. But it's already stalled. All of that, the other part is, is being removed. This is a funny thing. Well, not a funny thing, but some of these, some of these uh, circles of a stone are decorated. But hard to see from here. This is the columnata noreste. So the northeast columnata. It is the building that was attached to the colonnade of the northeast corner. It is characterized by the pillar that supported the vaulted roof and by the altar decorated with the ritual scenes. Originally decorated with figures, heads, feathers, serpents, and sculptures of mythical character. That's what it says, which is already eroded, you know, it's not here anymore. Look at this, continue being a residential area here. And some other, they, they, they are not going to be able to develop because of the of the trees, but look at that, look at that entrance over there. So this is called the place of the thousand columns. Yeah, well, it makes sense. So many columns. And the place we came in. Okay, now I'm gonna try to find out where the the 1,000 pillars extension to all the way here. So let's enjoy this part. Look at us over there. It looks nice. This entrance like a triangle, sir. So. ¿Para dónde está el cenote, mi amigo? Correcto. Okay, gracias. I think this is a representation of one of their houses, how they used to live. So let's walk in there. Look at this. This is how they used to live. And this is the house. Very nice. Okay. Now let's continue finding the cenote. Arco de acceso. The sac B number 74. An example of the control they have for entering the great living of Chichen Itza. Look at this. I live within the work. This walls here look impressive and they are kind of isolated from many other things. So let's check it out. Stoloxenote. <laughs> Here it is, that's the cenote. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it hasn't been used in a long time, so it's kind of dirty. They were the most relevant natural fresh water resources in the area. Well, I just was suspecting something better than to see, but I guess this is it. Okay, so we are at the Sac Bay number 10, which leads from the Great Pyramid, which is over here, the castle, to this place. And this is the Sac Bay. This is one of the few examples of already restored internal communications, communication ways. It connects the group of the Osuari with the Great Living or Central Square. At the one side of the access, there is a checkpoint attached to the say attached to the Say Square by an enamelled stone wall. It has lateral walls along the whole Sac Bay as a pass control. We also observe channels adapted to a certain distance for the direction of the rainwater and for ensuring a dry and safe pass. Okay, so, so we're gonna walk to El Osorio, Osario to complete this. 
Well, this is how it's supposed to be looking when they were in their plenitude of their activity. This is called the compound of the Oswari. Okay, so let's go check the, the buildings. The buildings are decorated on the side, but it's hard to see them anymore. And another one over here. This one has four entrance and the decorations on each side. This one and the pillar that used to be the the supporter of the roof and there's the big entrance here. Oh look at that. You go inside. Give us a little look. Wait. What do you see? Okay. I'm sending in I'm sending in the camera to see what we need to see here. Wow. There's two entrance there. And we keep going around. Some of them still have the decoration that the carbon can be seen, but I don't know if you from the other side of the camera can be able to see it, but this looks like a face with the claws of an eagle. And we're back to where we started. Give round thing here, who knows what it is for. This is the Osorio of the Great Priest. It is one of the most complex and important buildings in the site. It has the peculiarity of being built on top of a cave, the same as the castle. Its architecture is similar to the castle but with a more elaborated decoration. It is hard to see, but it's decorated all over the place here. So we're going this way around to see it. It's almost completely in, this, in the best of its time. The decorations are after the fourth level, the third level, one, two, three, four levels. But hard to see them over there. The serpents are here, as always. And look at this decoration of the serpent all the way down. And look at this. It's so natural as it was when it was built. I saw a little bit of scratches here and there, but more, most of the building still look as it was a long time ago. We're back to the other side of this. Uh, I don't know, it's north, south, east, whatever it is. Assuming a little pillar here that has a lot of inscriptions, but they are already corroded. So just a little bit of it, you can see. It's a nice tower though. The building continued going up for maybe another floor, but it collapsed. This is called the house of the metates. The metates are the stone they use it to crunch the corn, to make masa, to make dough for the tortillas. The finding of the abundant ceramical material and numerous fragments of metates allowed to infer a household role of linked to great public celebration that include preparing food. Post-classic Temprano, early post-classic 900 to 1200 DNE. There, as a metate. That's a metate. And how they put it over here. Okay, let's keep going. This is another branch of the Sakbe. Branch of arm of the Sakbe. We're walking it again to another part of the whole metropolis here. This is the Red House complex. Oh, check it out. 
I want you to look how clean this is. Well, you're just working on excavating here. That's why it's all done like that. Those tunnels over there, we need to walk them. Because this is another place here, I haven't been here. But you like yours. Okay. Oh, here it is. The Great Mirador. I gotta go around and find this guy.